first one in the group to get off the bus, check my luggage and through security. And that took 15 seconds. I'm not even kidding. Here we go. Do I check with you? Okay, thank you. It's beautiful. Emotional stuff as I boarded. Ooh. Beautiful. This is my obstructed view. Hey, I've got daylight at least. Pedro is my room steward. I've got my shore excursions here and the social package, which I purchased before getting on, and the water package I also ordered. Those are very necessary. Circle cocktail party on the third. Formal. All right, this room actually looks very nice. Mini bar, that's part of the elite passenger perks. And then, oops, more water, beer, soda. I'm gonna swap all of that. It does not matter how much equipment I buy for my vlogs, I still end up ghetto rigging it. I need to get situated and then I want to tell you some things about this whole transfer, getting to Alaska, getting to the ship, and this cruise in general. It's different than normal. I'm on the Coral Princess. This is my second cruise on this ship. This will be a seven day southbound voyage of the glaciers. I'm going to be going to Skagway, Juneau, Ketchikan, and then getting off in Vancouver. We also have two days of scenic cruising. I'm here by myself. I got an insane price for this cruise on a drop and go sale. If you don't know what that is, you can go onto the Princess website and under last minute cruise deals, they have drop and go sale pricing. Or you can go and they have a link that says sign up for special offers. So you can just click that and then get emails, which is how I was notified that this room for a solo passenger was $298 for the fare. Then taxes and fees took it up to $592 total, but probably the least expensive cruise I've ever been on. I mean, as far as per day pricing. This cruise leaves port at 8.30 tonight, and um, to get to Whittier from Anchorage, where everybody flies in, you either take a train, which is $89, I believe, you can take a princess transfer, which is $59, or you can book through a private um, transfer company. Since I wasn't able to use the princess booking, I went through Alaska cruise transportation company, I believe. And my driver was Nathan. He was really good. He was hilarious. And we left the airport around 10 a.m. It took us from 10 a.m. until now 2.30 to get to the pier. And we did stop for an hour, but a lot of the time was actually spent waiting to get into the tunnel because there was a train coming through and it's a one, one very narrow tunnel. You have to wait till the train comes through. That train was massive. Um, and then they have to, what did they call it, purge all the smoke from the train before you can go through. So we just kind of were sitting there waiting. And 
the trains get the right of way. If I were to come back here, the thing I would do differently is stay overnight prior, just because I normally do that and the stress of flying and making sure that you're gonna be at the ship before it takes off is too much for me. I, um, I travel best when I have everything lined up and I know my plan. So I would come the night before, stay on the Anchorage side, and then get up early to take the train, which is a direct path here to the ship. And what I read online was that as soon as that train stops right outside here where the ship boards, that like signals that the ship is going to start letting passengers come on. The whole process is just very different. And I literally came through security in two minutes. I got off the bus, gave a tip to the port person, and then walked in. It was completely vacant, no health form, and I was the only person at that whole counter. She's like, gave me the map of the ship, and she's like, I don't think you need this, do you? <laughs> and she's like, oh look, there's no line for security. So I walk over there, put my purse on the conveyor, walk through the metal detector, and walked in. It was so awesome. And I always give props to San Pedro because they do a great job with boarding, but this was really even faster. And of course it's because the people are staggered coming. There's no crowd waiting to get in. And I didn't even stop long enough to see if they had seating for if they have people wait. I just don't think that happens here. They don't have anything here in um, Whittier. When we came into town, there was a building on the right that's like orange and blue, I believe. 600 people live in that building, and it's connected by tunnel to the school. No one lives anywhere else, according to our tour guide. I was on the first transfer bus, and that got me here at 2.30. So the next group is going to get here around 4.30, and maybe 5.30, because I was scheduled, supposedly, to be arriving here at 1.30. I am kind of doing something this trip that I haven't done before, and I'm hoping I can follow through on it. We'll see. Anyways, because I got such a great price, I wanted to try to make this the least expensive cruise possible. And I've already done a few things that aren't just bare minimum, like buying the social package and this water package. But I actually think the water is a necessity and in my opinion, internet is also a necessity. Other than that, I'm not buying the beverage package and I am not going to be going to the sanctuary or spending frivolously. I'm not gonna do all the things I generally just do out of habit on a cruise, which include those things, getting my hair done, getting my nails done, just shopping in the stores or attending the sales. I am going to try and make this whole week-long cruise including airfare and everything and transfers, tips, less than $1,500. And initially my goal was gonna be 1,000, but I am about $5 away from that and I just boarded today, so it's not gonna happen. I'm going to still have a blast. I guarantee you I am not going to leave this cruise feeling that I missed out on anything because that was the way that my mom cruise with me and my sister. We didn't buy anything. We drank water. I mean, that's what we just did at home anyway. So it's about three now. I got my luggage 23 minutes after getting on the ship, literally. So anyway, I'm gonna grab food and then our mustard drill is not until 7.45. I'm gonna head into the napping room. that the 
600 residents of what you're used to live in. But according to my tour guide, or the bus driver over here, so that one is where the 600 residents of this city live now. That one is haunted. That's where they used to live. And he said that's been on Ghost Hunters. And here's a look at the pier from the ship. It's the Bayou Cafe. We got here early for a mustard drill. from the muster drill. It is 8, 8.08. Okay, the muster drill has been redone and it's great. They play a song, it's almost like Virgin Airlines. Virgin had a safety briefing that was like a really upbeat song that made you laugh and that's what Princess is doing. I got a little clip of it but then they demanded you put your phones down so I didn't get much. I sat next to a lady named Arlene talked with her about Viking cruises because she has never been on a princess ship and that is what she normally does is river cruises. So this is her first ocean cruise and um, what a good one to pick, Alaska. It's anytime dining for everyone today. Even like I have traditional dining that's normally 7.30 but because of the late mustard drill they just make it anytime for everyone. And you can just pick which dining room. I'm not sure I'll do that because I've got jeans and I don't feel like this is nice enough for the dining room. Tomorrow we're seen it cruising the Hubbard Glacier. And then the next day is Glacier Bay. And I really considered doing the sanctuary for that, but I ended up upgrading from the social to the surf package of internet, which was an additional $30. And even though I'm elite, it doesn't look like I have a discount on it. I have a, a minute perk of 150 minutes, which is what they used to do before they added this social package. And there are it's a very noticeable difference between the tiers of the plan because I started out on the low end and that's just Instagram messages like iMessages, Twitter, Snapchat, Skype. They do not work on that low level plan. So I upgraded to the surf plan. I am solo on this cruise so I'm gonna have to meet some people and make my time more exciting that way. But for tonight, I need to make sure I'm organized and that my room is put together so that I can enjoy the rest of the week. To give you an idea of what the boarding day looks like in Whittier, it's a much later all aboard, 8 p.m. Tomorrow and the next day are scenic cruising. 12 to four was the first thing on the schedule. And really, if you see here, other than like meeting staff, there's not much happening until 8.15. I just see here there's no happy hour listed. I wonder if there's going to be happy hour this week. It's 9 p.m. now. Look outside. Still daylight. I wanted to show you I got my room service. I decided not to go to a dining room tonight, so I have chili. This normally comes with chips, but I requested it without the chips. And... A chicken Caesar salad. Wow, those pieces of chicken are big. And the other thing I got was chamomile tea. How ridiculous is this? It's gotta be after 10. And it's still daylight. And I'm laying in bed. I am going to close my curtains so that the daylight doesn't come in. Some people wonder if these actually block light. They're super thick. So yeah, they do. And watch. I still have the TV on, but it's pretty dark. So I'll see you in the morning.
to get this fixed. It just needs to happen. This might be the best blowout I've had on a ship.